Okay, so Joni and I uh, debated um, where we were going to spend our first winter. And there was always the Florida, Arizona, all those types of things. And since we had already were in Texas, up in Conroe, our home park, uh, to do our three-week personal uh, items, get those all squared away, do our winter maintenance on the motorhome, it made sense to just go south to the Rio Grande Valley. So that's what we decided to do. And where we ended up spending was 15 miles north of the Mexican border. We're going to give you an overview of where we stayed, what we did, and yes, we did go <laughs> to Mexico. Vienen! on RV Street. Okay, so let's get right to it. Our end of the year, three weeks in Conroe, which is our home park, as Martin said, um, it's now over and we are heading to Rio Grande Valley. But getting there, we decided to catch up with a couple friends of ours. Hi, Bill and Louise. <laughs> um, they're, they're live in Corpus Christi, but we caught up with them in Rockport, Texas. Yep. Um, we spent about four days with them on our way to Rio Grande Valley. Rio Grande. <laughs> so yeah, so we went to this, uh, we rented a spot. It was at uh, Bayview Resort there in Rockport. We spent four days there and it was so-so park. Uh, I'd give yeah. it probably about a two, Yeah. Uh, but it was convenient. And it was good to see Bill and Louise. Yeah, that, that was the main thing. We stayed with them for four days at, the, at that park and then we said goodbye, got in the coach and started heading south on 69 towards Corpus. So we went all the way down 69 through Corpus, down through uh, Padre Island, and then arrived in Harlingen, Texas. Yeah. That was our first location. Now, since we are Thousand Trail members, we have access to Encore Parks. Yes. And uh, Joni, why don't you give them a quick review on how we do that? Thousand Trail members, um, we also have what's called the Trails Collection. Uh, it allows us to stay in Encore Parks for two weeks for free. And then you, it's basically called being out of the system for a week and we would pay for that week out. We stayed in eight different parks. Uh, we are actually arrived here December 10th. Yes. Checked into our first park for two weeks. That was free. Then we, after two weeks, we moved to another park that was our out park. Yes. And we did that for one week and paid for that week. Okay. And those out weeks that we paid were roughly about 150 bucks. Yeah, and about. So it was two weeks in free, one week out pay. Two weeks in free, one week out pay. You add it all up for the winter that we spent here, uh, getting here December 10th leaving February 25th was $476 in total campground fees and that was with all full hookups which included electric. Yes and that's a big thing. That is a big thing. These parks as you can see again on the map there I've showed you all the different logos there of the Encore parks. They just kind of peppered all the way across from Harlingen to McAllen. Each one of these parks has its own personality and its own little cluster of amenities yeah but one thing i notice is that they're thriving communities it's like every, so everybody comes down here for the winter and they just become a city unto themselves uh depending on the size of the park the staffing of the park the location of the park mm. uh they'll have different things available but like we said these just become communities and in these communities they have wood shops, full blown wood shops. I mean, these are big buildings. You open up the doors and they got saws and planers and stacks of lumber 
and drill presses and you name it they've got it you, you literally can build a whole array of cabinets in here if you want so a lot of the guys go there and they work in the wood shops they have sewing rooms where you can go in there and i mean we've seen where they've made some beautiful quilts and things yep uh they have uh, all these parks have a mail room mm -hmm. so you can receive mail directly uh, to this mail room. So like with us, we're escapees. We usually have our mail sent to Livingston, Texas, accumulate it there, and then we have them ship it to us in bulk at one time. But since we're down here and they have their own mail room, for example, we could go to Amazon, yes. order something, and then have it directly shipped to the park. Some of the games that they have down here, again, we're talking community, hundreds of people that this a little city's brought up, so they, we, you'll see signs around here that says, seniors at play. <laughs> and it's true. <laughs> <laughs> They're everywhere. Uh, let me see, shuffleboard. Shuffleboard, outdoor shuffleboard, yep. Um, pickleball. Pickleball. Which is kind of a version of tennis, a smaller version, if you've never played it before, it's... Most of you all probably know what pickleball, from what we're learning, is a very fast and upcoming popular game. People, it's just catching fire, but they have a lot of pickleball, pickleball courts down here. Uh, card game rooms. Oh yeah, there is any kind of version of cards that you want to play around here. I mean, we've learned some. Samba, hand and foot, canasta, 65. Uh, social security, bingo, card, yeah, card bingo. Yeah, it goes on, yeah. on, on and on and on. Um, uh, some of these, some of these parks even have restaurants in them. Yeah, yep, oh. they have restaurants, pools. Most all of them have a really nice pool. It's heated too. Hey, they're heated. All of them had a hot tub. Yeah. Uh, some are bigger than others. Uh, some have two. Some have one. Uh, it again, it depends on the size of the park. And the demand. They of the park. all seem to have some sort of uh, fitness center in them. Yep. You know, some are larger than others, obviously, but they all seem to have that. And they have exercise classes. Uh huh. They all have an activity center. Oh my gosh! Yes, and they get these um, all these bands, and there was a big billboard of one with all these different bands and stuff, and it's all sold out. There's always, always, always something going on yep. in these parks. Always. Like I say, it's a city. All these folks come from down, from up north down south. So they literally create all this mm -hmm. activities for people that come here. Another thing that we found at uh, these Encore parks is they had... They're called Encore Winter Olympics. <laughs> and they have their own little Winter Olympics. Um, we met some people that did um, the pool um, they were in a pool tournament and a card tournament and... Darts. Yeah. They, they'll have all these different sporting events, indoors and outdoors. They'll combine them all into a day of the Encore Olympic Games. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll go all day, you know, and they compete against each other. And then finally you end up with the winner. <laughs> and do they, do they get a gold thing? Yeah, they, they actually, I don't know if it's actually gold, but uh, yeah, they, they, give get, medals. They, they do give medals and whatnot. And, you know, it's, it's all the different Encore parks participating in this. Yeah. It's really quite cool. Bike trails. They're everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, all these parks have really nice roads. Unlike some of the others you've seen us talk about dirt roads and gravel and blah, blah. All these parks down here are all asphalt, concrete roads. Really nice to ride and get your, you know, do your, up. Yeah, do your bike riding. One thing that I learned, uh, ran into by accident, is uh, these Canadians, they play a game called bocce ball. Well, it's called or something. It's a variation of bocce ball. You can see, but the first park that we went to, which was Sunshine, uh, Sunshine RV Resort, that place was loaded with Canadians, French Canadians. But they played this game out in the outside with the little balls and big balls. And I was so intrigued with this. And so I was over there watching them. And there was one guy there that spoke 
kind of broken English, but we kind of hooked up and and he he said, "Come on, you want to play?" I said, "Yeah, I want to learn this game." So anyway, it was a lot of fun. We ended up playing several days with them. Some of these parks had lakes mm -hmm. or large ponds with waterfowl. You could go out there either early in the morning or late at night, at, or you know, like at dusk, sunset, and uh, you'd see all kinds of birds and pelicans and ducks and swans. Oh and, my! <laughs> <laughs> and they all have full laundry facilities. Some of these parks down here are gated. Uh, I would say most are gated. Uh, yeah, every one of them that we went into was gated. You, it requires a code to get in. I know a lot of people don't like RV park living. These parks down here uh, had uh, lots of space between them. Uh, you were not sitting right on top of your neighbor. There was plenty of room around uh, your coach. You had lots of space. Yeah, I never uh, ever felt cramped at any me, of these me parks. Me either. Any of them. Um, but we felt for us, for this first winter, uh, we didn't want to go running out into the Arizona <laughs> desert and kind of learn this right off the bat. Uh, we felt like, you know, we want to, we like the idea of full hookups. It's less stress. We got water. We can dump when we want. Electricity's right there, and it was it was able. Mm -hmm. It was good for us to uh, do our first winter this way. Now I think with that being said, we actually do plan on boondocking. Yeah. I just don't know is we're going to attempt it for a full winter. Give it maybe a month or something, and we'll see how it all goes, and then we'll take it from there. And so, but for us, this worked out great this yeah. year. And you'll see next year, you know, when we, we're going to have to face this next year, where we're going to go and how we're going to do it. Uh, that's the beauty of our being and traveling is you can, <laughs> you can try all kinds of different things and find out what you really like. But some of the mm. cons of, that we ran into being down here. I'll let um, you pick the first one. Okay, the first one. Oh, my gosh. There was a park that we stayed in. And the first night... I woke up, I thought there was a train going through the motorhome, or at least <laughs> right beside it, and it blew the horn like for 20 minutes going by. It was horrible. And it was loud. Another one of the cons that we ran into was wind. Um, now, it wasn't really all that bad, but it's, it's windy down here. Yes. Uh, most people, they said, yeah, when you come down here, there's always a breeze. Let me tell you, <laughs> <laughs> there was many days when it was way over the top of a breeze. In fact, there was one day that it was so windy that I went to open the door to go outside and it about pulled me out the motor home and, and with the door with it. I was, so I just stayed in that day. It was very common. Uh, most every day you'll have at least an eight to 10 mile an hour breeze. Which is great. That's fine. Then another section of the days, it'd be, you know, 15, 17, 18. Still, that's okay. But there were many days where it was 25, 30, 35, gusting, gusting to 50. Well, gusting to 38, 40, and that'd go on for two, three days. It's windy, 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 windy. And then we had one good storm that came through here. It was sustained 40, 45, gusting to 50, 52, 53. So today, we had a major wind event come through here. The winds have been pretty much sustained at about 39, 40, 41 miles an hour, gusting to 50 to 55 here in our GV. Tape here on our window shades to keep them from flapping side to side and making noise and making them possibly threadbare and all that. But on the west side, you can see the sun is beginning to set now. 
on the, on the west side, we just decided to bring the slide in today. I showed you it was uh, blowing 50 miles an hour. And uh, man, those toppers were just, you know, flapping like crazy. And I had put some rolled up uh, hoodies underneath there and did a bunch of other things. But after that was all over, I thought, you know, I need to come up with a better solution. So I went to Home Depot and I found this strap. It has big hooks on it right here at the bottom. And it actually was perfect. Uh, it was 30 feet long with another foot and a half piece that was all uh, bolted to the, to the crank where you, you know, where you crank it down. So I took the crank apart, took that piece apart, and then I sewed those together. So this is the part right here that was on the, uh, the crank. And I cut it, and then I spliced this together. I used some uh, hot glue, and then I sewed it with fishing line, sewed those together. And I've got that hook on both ends of the strap. It looks like that strap is really pulling down on that uh, tar on the topper, but it's not. Um, you can see, I'll just kind of wiggle it a little bit. You can see it's loose, but it's just enough to keep that topper from billowing up and banging and all that. Because this area and this region has that gulf air so much uh, and so often and so regular there are windmills everywhere down here <laughs> i mean they're just wind farms uh it, unbelievable for I, miles, I, and uh, miles and miles and miles hundreds and hundreds well i'm sure there are thousands of them but they they're in yeah. these groupings you know i've never seen so many windmills in my life um Another thing that wasn't all that pleasant is they burn old sugar cane. Yeah, this is an agricultural area down here. And one of their big crops is sugar cane. So after they harvest, they got all this dead yeah. stuff, stuff, whatever it is. And they pile it up and they burn. And you can look up in the horizon and you can see these gigantic brown plumes of smoke and you go, oh, they're burning. And if the wind is blowing right, it'll blow that burn right to you. Mm. And you can, it, I mean, it literally smelled like someone's having a campfire right outside your door. One day it was so bad that we actually closed the doors and windows and uh, because it was just way, way smoky and smelly. Yep. Some of the good things that we noticed here was uh, no problem getting a spot. Even if we did not have our Thousand Trail Encore package, if, if you were just to drive down here, Yes. There is plenty of spots. Every one of these parks had a lot of empty spaces. I asked Joni, how would you like to go to a real local indigenous Mexican restaurant? She goes, oh yeah, that would be fun. So not an Americanized Mexican restaurant. Yeah, a no, true... No Tex-Mex stuff going yeah, no yeah. on. So anyway, I ended up finding this place where all the locals go. And so we went there and ate, and we were the only <laughs> Caucasians in there. The and food uh, the food was, was great. Awesome. The pricing was great. They treated us like, you know, we were just their neighbors, and it was fun. While we were here, we also went to South Padre Island. Oh, that was fun. Now, again, on the map, uh, you can see that from where Harlingen is, it's only about maybe 40 minutes in the car. Yeah no traffic you get to south padre island and while we were there oh we stopped at the world's largest beach bar yeah. it's a place called clayton's um really really super cool bar and it sits right there on the water um food wasn't that great no the food was not we ate lunch there yeah um it was yeah. it was yeah. a five maybe. it was totally forgettable food the restaurant the bar itself was very cool. They had good music playing. Of course, they didn't have all the woo 
two spring break activities going on because now it was what December. <laughs> we once we got out of Clayton's, uh, we decided to get in the car and go north up Padre Island, and the road got narrower and narrower and real. You know, I mean, and now all there is is sand dunes on the side of us, and the wind was blowing then too that day, and the sand was kind of. Uh, skirting across the roads and but it finally yeah. it finally ends that road finally ends we saw a bunch of people riding on horses mm -hmm. which i found to be kind of odd just out in the middle of nowhere it really. was it literally <laughs> was out in the middle of nowhere it looked like there was a, little, a trail ride or something yeah. and again as we're going all of these different parks there we look to see what's around that particular park what's within five ten miles where what's going on here so we went to another park, and close by was a place called Hughes Ramsey Park. Mm. Um, it's a world birding, birding center. center. Uh, again, being down here in South Texas, a lot of migrating birds come down here. And uh, so we went, that, we spent a day there. Um, again, we were a little off season there, it, we, you know, this December. Uh, we did see some wildlife. The trails were really cool to walk on. Yeah, the trails were really cool. There really wasn't that much going on at that particular park, and I guess it's just because we were there at, at that time of the year. Let's talk Mexico. <laughs> we have to go to Mexico, right? Yeah. I mean, you're 15 miles away. Everybody comes down here to do this, and when people come down here, they go to Mexico basically for three things. What are they, Joni? Eyeglasses, dental work, meds. Yeah. Oh my. <laughs> yep, yeah. now let me tell you, I'm just going to confess right here. <laughs> I was not enthusiastic about this. And that's saying the least. I did not want to go to Mexico. I don't want to go to Mexico and run into the cartel and find my head in the body bag. In fact, he said, we are not going to Mexico. We're not going to go. Period. There's no point in going. We don't need to go. Why do we want to go to Mexico? Sounds like Even a song. though we had already prepared months before last year, we went and got our passports and all that. All that's in order, just in case we want to go to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> we... Again, being at these different parks, we ran into this couple, Rich and Carol. Mm -hmm. Hi, Rich and Carol. And they became friends of ours, and they brought up Mexico. And I said, I don't want to go to Mexico. <laughs> and they, they laughed at Martin. <laughs> and, and they said, Martin, it's, listen, it's cool. There are some parts of the border you don't want to go over and into Mexico. They said, but here in Progreso, it's totally good, it's totally safe, and there are more Americans down there yeah. than there are Mexicans. They said, we're going to take you and we're going to show you the ropes. So they took us down there, we all piled into their car, we drove, and from where we were, it took like 15 minutes to get yeah, there. Yeah, something like that. And he didn't park and walk in. We drove the car right in through across mm -hmm. the border and went right down in the main drag and parked down there and we stayed um, about four hours. Yeah, yeah, about that. We went shopping, uh, we went to a little, uh, they have cafes there uh, where you can get lunches. Lunches, yeah, lunches. we discovered lunches, we love them. They're little sandwiches that they make. They have, out they have outside bars. You're just walking down the street, Americans, just shuffling back and forth, and there's a bar there. You go over there and get a margarita, a beer, whatever. And we love them, too. <laughs> <laughs> so we stopped and had a couple of drinks there at one of the out, outdoor bars. bars. And so on and so forth, and we ended up leaving. Our dentist told us, when we, when we were getting all, all of our health care stuff all done before we went full time, our dentist said, look, you guys' mouths are great right now. But you do have some pockets and stuff. You need to get a 4910 cleaning about every four months. So wherever you go, find a place and get it done. Carol and Rich have already showed us the ropes. Joni and I are going to wing this on our own. <laughs> we are brave. 
So we get in the car and we drove down to Mexico to Progreso ourselves. Again, about 15 minutes. We did not take the car into Mexico. Um, there's two parking spaces just before you, you cross over the bridge. And you can park either on the left or the right. And a friend of ours told us, you know, you're better off to park on the left because mm -hmm. when you come out, you're going to be on the left and it's just easier to get out. Yep. If you're going to walk over and walk over the bridge into Mexico, make sure each one of you has four quarters. So once you've paid your dollar in quarters, you can you now begin your walk across the bridge and you go up and it crests at the top and right there is where you have the U.S border sign saying that this is the main sign. It's right there in the middle of the Rio Grande River. Then you continue down the bridge and at the end of the bridge they have um, the Mexican flag and your last checkpoint where there is a, that's where all the Mexican guards are. Now, I found it really interesting and it really kind of surprised me that you do not need your passport to get into Mexico. You no. can just walk into Mexico and nobody cares. You just apparently. walk right in. However, right at the beginning of the sign, we saw this sign when we drove in. I didn't notice it at first, but right as you are approaching and getting ready to park, there's a sign right there that says, no weapons or ammunition allowed Penalty, prison. <laughs> I mean, it's not, you know, I mean, they're just right to the point. If you try to bring any kind of gun or mm. ammo, you're going to prison. They don't say how long. They don't say you have an equal right to a trial. Uh, you, you're going to prison. But the thing is, nobody checks. Yeah. Literally, you just walk right in. The first thing you see when you get there is wall to wall, back to back, next to each other, dental places, and, dentists. And pharmacies. And pharmacies. They are literally hundreds of them everywhere. You can get Botox injections. <laughs> you can get facelifts. You can get liposuction you, you can get, can get ampicillin penicillin amoxicillin uh, you, um, ambien viagra, viagra blood pressure medicine you name it you just walk up you tell them what you want and and what milligram you want it in and, and you, no prescriptions nothing no doctor's appointment no nope. you just walk in there and what you so what you do is you just shop you go into one and you say, yeah, how much is uh, this XYZ blood pressure medicine or whatever it is you need? Uh, $15 for 50. Okay, you walk <laughs> over to the next guy. How so, much do you show? This is a great case of self-medicating. <laughs> oh my <laughs> God. It, it's, it's unbelievable. And Joni pointed out, we saw this one. She says, Martin, look. Uh, and there is this pharmacy and the name of this pharmacy is Almost free pharmacy. <laughs> <laughs> Almost free pharmacy. I couldn't believe it. Uh, it was crazy. Now, one other thing that we saw down there. Remember how scared I was? I didn't want to go down there. The car, all this stuff. So here we are. We're down there. And all of a sudden, I look. And coming down the street are three military jeeps. There's like four military guys in full <laughs> camo with AR-15s coming down patrolling. Standing on each one. There's like four on each Jeep. Jeep. Yeah. And here they come, boy, in full riot gear. It looked like three Jeeps full of SWAT teams. <laughs> and I, now, I was told you do not take pictures of these guys. Uh, I was, I was going to, I wanted to take a picture to show you. They said, no, 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 no. You do not take pictures of these guys because they don't want their pictures to get out and the cartel find out who they are and all that. So you don't do that. But, but we were told, Martin, nothing's going down. You want these guys here. They yeah. patrol and they let their presence be known here. They're here to protect you and to protect all the market folks. They're here showing their presence so the cartel, they don't go anywhere near there. They, they stay clear of there. 
uh, because there is so much commerce that yeah. goes on down here with Americans doing business. They want to make sure nothing bad happens. So that's why they were there. Okay, leaving Mexico. Remember we told you it's easy to go in. Coming back, a little bit different story. Yeah, a little more difficult. So when you come back to the bridge, you have to pay 25 cents, one quarter. So it's $1 going in, 25 cents coming back. So make sure you have enough quarters to do both. Once you walk over the bridge and get down to the bottom or near the bottom of the bridge, you'll have a preliminary Mexican customs agent there. Wasn't he Mexican? Customs? No, he was a U.S. agent. Um, he was really... Oh, okay, he, yeah, he was he a was, U.S. agent. Yes. But he wanted to preliminary... You had to show him your passport. Yeah. He wanted to make sure, before you go any further, I want to make sure you got this squared away. So we showed him our passport. He waved us on. Then we went to the bottom of the... Yeah, we got to the end of the bridge, and there's a big building that you have to go into. And actually, this is the official um, a customs office to get back into the states. And you, you actually, you go in there, and everyone's lined up, and you just show them your passport. And it, you tell them if you have something, and they'll say... They'll ask you, do you have anything to declare? Yeah. And there's a, there's a <laughs> list of things you have to declare. So once you do that, and they just push you on through... Then you stop over at another little area and they they look at what you have and they give you a total of how much money you owe for the items that you have purchased. Mm -hmm. And then you're back in the U.S. and you're free to go. Yeah. Down here in RGV, you're going to find the whole array of support systems that you're used to. Yeah, like all, all of the common stores that you would see anywhere else, Walmart, H-E-B, Academy. Home Depot, Lowe's, your fast food stores. Yeah. Uh, they're all down here in RGV. We liked being down here in RGV. Mm -hmm. uh, we've met a lot of new people. We made a lot of new friends. Mm -hmm. uh, we've met, uh, we've learned <laughs> several new card games. We experienced Mexico. Uh, we got a dental, new dental contact for yep. when we're when we're here. The temperatures down here are pretty much what we expected. Yeah, really quite pleasant. Uh, cool in the mornings, mm -hmm. 50s, 40s, 50s, 60s, uh, 70s, 80s in the afternoon. Breezy. Yeah, breezy. When it's not windy, but there's always a nice breeze going on. It's not as pretty as Florida. No, no, not at all. In Florida, uh, the parks are pretty for the most part, but the surrounding landscape, the general overall area of RGV is not like Orlando. Nothing at Miami all Miami like Beach, the Keys. It's not like that. But like I said, this is where all the this is where tons of people come down here to spend the winter. Hmm. So there's a very overwhelming overriding feeling of retirement people enjoying the winter mixed cultures canadians uh, but when you drive around the streets and stuff it's you know you're in mexico you are not in or near mexico you are not in yes. florida yes another thing i noticed as we were preparing to do this video hardly any police presence yeah, and you know, I didn't even recognize that fact until Martin made mention of it. But yeah, you don't. And there's no crime. Yeah. I mean, no matter where we went, where we drove, where we went, it was rare to see yeah. a policeman. Yeah. As you know, uh, Joni and I usually always grade our camp. Rate this, rate this park. Camp room, yeah. Uh, with our sophisticated uh, scoring system. <laughs> We're not going to do that this time. <laughs> no. Uh, just too many campgrounds and too many variables. Uh, but overall, we liked it. Absolutely. I would and, most definitely come back here and spend another winter. Yeah. Oh, hey, if you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing and hitting the like button. Uh, Joni and I, we, we think these videos through a lot and spend time doing them. And if you like this kind of content, uh, we really would appreciate a subscription. 
also, it's really good to hear your comments and your thoughts about what we do and where we visited. Yes. Now, I will admit, uh, we tend to be busy and we don't go back to that comment section every single day. Uh, but we really would like to hear what you have to say and uh, your feedback. That's it for now. Until next time, this, this is, is RV, RV Street. Street. Stick, Stick around. around.